Okay, I'm in. Yep. Okay. Hey guys, we have Charles Seaman here, just doing a quick check on the audio. Uh, if you can hear me, either type in the chat box or feel free to unmute yourself and say hello. Hey, Charles. It's Richard. How are you? Hey, Richard. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm doing great, too. You know what? I like that background. It looks like you got the uh, the private jet there, eh? It's my favorite background. <laughs> That's a good background, yes. <laughs> well, guys, we'll give it just a few minutes. Uh, normally, we start up at 8.30. We sometimes give a minute or two uh, just for anybody who travels in here late. Uh, and Mark will be joining us also. He'll be our host for the evening. And Richard, who you just saw on there, will be our guest speaker. So you guys are all going to be in for a great treat tonight. Richard, I was going to say, while we wait for everybody to uh, to join in, do you want to try taking the uh, the screen share and just make sure you're set up for that? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, you need to go ahead and give me uh, the ability to do that. I'm go okay, ahead. hang on. Let's see. You okay? It should be good now. Let me know if you can do it. Okay, I can go ahead and share my screen. How does that look? That was perfect. That's a good background. <laughs> Let me see if I can uh, do a full screen. Uh, let's see, page, full screen mode. Does that look any different? Yep. yep, that's good. And let's see, how do I how do I do these controls here? Oh, good. All right. Yeah, usually you can just use the up and down arrows. Most times that will suffice, or sometimes even a click of the mouse will, will do it too. Yep, great. And I see that we have Mark joined in as well. Mark, are you on? It looks like you were on, but you may have disappeared. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay, so uh, how do since I don't don't have my controls? Oh yeah, it's up there. Okay. Yep, so we'll give it just another minute or two. We have a few people joining in now. It's like Mark must have gotten kicked, so he's coming back in now. Mark, are you back in? Yes. Well, I, I came in under one, so I left and came back. Can you hear me right there? All okay, right. fantastic. Hey, Mark. How are you, buddy? Great. How are you? Thank you. Uh, triple digits here in Texas. <laughs> well, that's why I'm not in Texas. <laughs> Where's everybody from? Well, we have a wide mix time. Everybody, if you want, just type in the chat box where you're from, city and state. I, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. Mark, you're over I'm in Birmingham, Birmingham Alabama correct? today, but also from Texas. Mm -hmm. Next next year, I'll be saying, uh, well, I'm in uh, Colombia today, but I'll be in Portugal next week. <laughs> uh, oh, California, Janice, California. Beaumont. PR from Beaumont, Texas. Looks, looks like we're spread out across the country. We have, we have okay, fantastic. Who, who was that? That was Grover from Birmingham. Okay, fantastic. Looks like we're covering coast to coast tonight. Yeah, people are 
uh, typing in where they're from in the uh, chat box. So if anybody yep. wants to go to the chat box, you can type in where you're from. We got Shu from New York, Ryan from New York City. Mark, do you, do you want to get started up or would you rather wait a minute or two just to see if anybody else joins in before we get going? I, I was going to see right before we get started uh, if Ryan was here on the call. Yes, Ryan's here. I see him in the okay, participant Ryan, box. If you'll unmute for just a moment, I was going to talk about uh, Ryan's uh, situation right before we get started. There's a few more people coming on the call. So, Ryan, can you unmute yourself? I am. Okay, good. So, Ryan, you were on the call a week ago, right? Correct. And tell everybody what happened. Um, I was on the call last week um, with, what was his name again? Not, mm, I forget how to pronounce it. Nissan. Nissan, yeah. Um, and was discussing more, let's start about that. Was discussing, um, it was my first time on the call, and I'm learning uh, more or less about multifamily properties. Um, how to get into it, how to approach um, investors. Yeah, we don't we don't have a lot of time, so you need to get right to it because we got like two minutes at the most here, and then he's going to be starting. So if you get too much background, you're going to do that, and never get to the point. So the point was, after the call, you and I talked about a property you had in Salisbury under contract. Correct. And so, yes. what did you we what did you learn? What happened? What get to that point um, specifically? Okay. When um when me and you spoke after the call. I uh, had a property on the contract in um, Salisbury. What I learned um, after the um, was owner for owner financing, something that I was not aware of starting, um, you know, bringing you to the real estate um, wholesaling. And uh, when I gathered a lot of information about owner financing, um, basically was another avenue or way to make some, make some money in real estate that I had no idea of. I just, you know, was very, since being new to it, I was just on just the wholesaling part of it. Now, in owner, owner financing, speaking to Mark, I learned about, you know, a, a property free, uh, that a property free and clear, um, which was my, in my case, uh, the house that had the contract, that's what it was. So I ended up speaking to the homeowner, um, brought that option up if we ever got there, but I ended up getting an end buyer. So, um, I never got to do the owner financing part. But, but, but based upon the feedback I gave you, you did go back and renegotiate a lower price with the seller, and then you were able Correct. to find an end buyer that was a cash buyer. But the point of all this quickly that I was going to make is that many people miss that maybe 20 to 30% are wholesale deals. The large majority of deals out there don't fit all cash deep discount. And so... There's lots of things to learn about. I'm going to have a guest speaker on in about two weeks, John from Huntsville, Alabama. He started out with cash, and now he's an expert in all this creative finance. He's going to be our speaker in two weeks. So with that, I think we're up to enough. To thank you for jump, joining us there for a moment. So Charles, uh, I think we're, we added about another third in terms of participants here. We may get a few more coming on. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Guys, before we, before we have Rock do the intro, uh, just a quick note, if anybody does have any questions, please write them in the chat box, and if they're not addressed during the broadcast, we'll have Richard answer them at the end, okay? Right. Okay, well, I'll start, I'll jump in with the introduction. So Richard is somebody I've respected for a long time. I first met him, I'd say probably over 20 years ago, when he was in Hawaii. Everybody feel bad for him having to live in Hawaii. So he sold his house there, being very creative, and what was the, uh, he'll probably clear, clarify, I think it was like a nine day auction or something like that, but sold it very quickly, very creatively, and then moved from there to Colorado, and just outside of Colorado Springs. <clears throat> he became an expert on marketing and getting deals and culminating with one year of doing as many as 500 deals in one year, which I know many people have not done 500 deals in their entire career, so 500 deals in a year is phenomenal. So the key, I think he'll tell you, is he's a marketing expert. He's also been a speaker for me, the top uh, guru speakers, everybody out there. But I'll, I'll say uh, Richard's going to need as much time as he can here with the slides to come through. 
So thank you so much uh, tonight, Richard, for being on the call and sharing your wisdom and experience with us. Oh, it's great to be here, Mark. Um, I'm excited to share. I, you know, I probably got two hours worth of stuff, so I'm going to crunch it down into this meeting here. <laughs> so uh, Well, you can go a little bit over if you need to. Well, okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll burn through things, okay? I won't go off on my normal tangents, and uh, then we will do some Q&A, and then if we have extra time, we can, I could, you know, anything I didn't, you know, cover fully. Yeah, like, sounds like a good plan. All right, thank yeah. you. All right. So did you want me to go or what? Yeah, go ahead, get started. Okay, well, this is Richard Roop. And so the title of this meeting tonight is five ways, I got a typo there, five ways to get seller, buyer, and investor leads for free, and also how to achieve your income and growth goals during any economy. And this is an interesting economy, I think everybody would agree. So um, a lot of the strategies that I've created for real estate investors to succeed some of the best stuff I created during the last financial crisis. And so I'm, um, I'm excited to you know, share some of my, my best practices. So um, what we wanna talk about is how to help yourself and your family while helping others overcome the biggest challenges of their life now. I mean, uh, people are, there's a lot of people that are, are actually in a better position with this new world of virtual entrepreneurship. There's a lot of people struggling. I think we're gonna have a lot of carnage over time because of uh, we haven't seen all that fallout of the, the recent lockdown. And uh, so you just got to prepare yourself, protect yourself, but there's huge opportunities now and in the future. And what, what's gonna happen is a lot of more people are gonna be in trouble with the real estate, uh, all different types of properties, and they're gonna just wanna get out, okay? And so uh, really good, high integrity, ethical uh, real estate uh, professionals can you know, go in there and you know, solve their problem and uh, get them onto the next chapter of life, whatever that is. So that's, that's kind of my prophetic vision, all right? So some of the things that I'm prepared to go over here today, Mark and Charles, is uh, you know, how to get free real estate leads, uh, for whether you treat your real estate investing as a business or more as a, you know, operation. I consider myself a real estate entrepreneur. This is my business. And so I think the buying and selling of houses um, is a business. And by the way, Mark, uh, it wasn't 500 in one year. It was it, it's 500 over, you know, a number. Did you all hear it? All right. All right, so I'm going to talk about how to raise some cash the now. meeting number? I don't know. Let me see. Let me go back. All right, whoever's talking about the I meeting. I don't know. Jeez. Ahead, Mike, I don't yourself. know how you think it's on it. Can you, can you mute them, Charles? Value of selling investor lease. Mm. Nicole, can you mute, mute yourself? Yep, hang on, Mark. We'll work on that right now. We'll mute everybody. All right. All right, so we'll talk about how to raise some cash now, how to improve your cash flow, and how to build up some cash later uh, while protecting yourself and different things you can do now because of this new uh, you know, place we're in. How do you protect yourself when, you're, when you own property or if you're buying property or even when you're selling property, okay? Um, and then how to turn your trash into cash. I talked about how to convert some, some of your potential deals that you haven't been able to turn into deals and actually turn those into some cash profits. So how to convert your unconverted leads. And then also, I think it's important that everybody lives the life they prefer, they operate how they want. Uh, I think we should have the freedom. Uh, we don't quite have as much freedom as we else ago, uh, but I think you should set things up and I'll tell you exactly how to do that. How do you, how do you live the preferred lifestyle doing what you're passionate about, okay? All right, so a little bit about me. I'm Richard Group. I, I'm known as the marketing consultant for real estate entrepreneurs. Um, I grew up in California until 1982 when I joined the Air Force. Uh, when I got out of the Air Force, I moved to uh, uh, from Alaska to uh, Hawaii. So I was in Alaska for the last two and a half years. I lived in Hawaii for eight years, got into real estate, 
uh, I got into marketing in Alaska while I was in the service, and then I uh, moved to Colorado in 2000 or 1995 as a marketing consultant, and I really that's when I started my real estate business. And I moved that from there to Texas last year. I did spend a couple years uh, traveling around, meeting with business owners that wanted to sell their business, and I offered a marketing plan for that. That was quite. Uh, uh, but now I'm based here in Texas. My website is richardroop.com, and that's the way to get a hold of me after tonight. All right, let's see here. So in California, I want to tell you a little bit of my story because it's very instructional. Uh, it'll be helpful because I'm going to give you some uh, strategies and some ideas. And I think uh, a little bit of my background will help you say, well, maybe I should listen to this guy. But just real quickly, I grew up in Orange County. Um, we, we lived about just Orange County, California. We lived in about every neighborhood in Orange County. We just moved every year for some reason in my family. In my junior high school year, I was actually the business manager of my, my junior high school yearbook, and I sold advertising to the local merchants. <laughs> I haven't been to college. I, I've learned everything from the School of Hard Knocks, but I do have an MBA, and an MBA stands for Mentors, Books, and Audios. So it's I've taught myself through self-education, never went to college. I did want to go to college, but I didn't have any money. And my uncle was involved with Atari startup, and he was in the Air Force. He learned electronics, and then he became a multimillionaire. So I go, I want to do that. So I, I uh, went in the Air Force to learn electronics, <laughs> found out it wasn't that quite of a challenge. Then I got into entrepreneurship. Um, yeah, but that's why I joined the Air Force was to learn electronics and get rich. Well, the way you get rich is becoming an entrepreneur, okay? And, uh, or, you know, real estate investing or other types of investing or inheriting uh, money. Those are like the three top ones. <laughs> All right. So I did join the Air Force, for, Air Force for five years. Last two and a half years, I was in Alaska and I was delivering pizzas to uh, get some extra money. And they weren't sending a menu out with the pizzas, so I, I made a, a, a flyer, a pizza menu on my Macintosh. I bought the Macintosh when it first came out in 1984. And I actually got a contract on base to do graphic work and advertising for the places on base. And then I, I created the military discount coupon book where I sold advertising in the coupon book uh, to the local merchants and gave those, those books away on base because there was no way to advertise on base. So that's an example of what I'm gonna talk about later of cooperative advertising, okay? And it was very successful. I thought I was gonna go do that when I got out of the Air Force, but I read a book, How to Make $100,000 a Year as a Stockbroker, No Experience Necessary. And I said, well, I qualify. So when I got to Hawaii, my wife got stationed in Hawaii. I got out of the service. I met her in Alaska. In, in Alaska. And uh, I, I applied to become a broker and I got, I got hired as a broker and I did that in Hawaii. That was in 1987. If you remember in October of 1987, we had the stock market crash. And, but I actually was the number one broker in the office that month because I was telling people to short the market. <laughs> I became um, the marketing director of Advanced Neurodynamics, uh, which is now nlp.com where we did books, tapes, and seminars on NLP trainings and personal growth and development. Um, I studied, you know, Tony Robbins, Dan Kennedy, Gary Halbert, Jay Abraham. Those were, you know, some of the people I studied to become successful, especially the marketing guys like Dan Kennedy, Gary Halbert, and Jay Abraham. In fact, I did a joint venture with Jay Abraham back there in 94. Um, in fact, I'm going to be uh, meeting with Dan Kennedy. I don't know if you guys know Dan Kennedy, but he's one of my marketing mentors. And I'm going to be meeting with him uh, J July 29th this, uh, this month. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I created the, uh, I published The Secret of Creating Your Future. And again, I, I'm going to talk about that a little bit because I'm going to give you a, everybody a copy of that book. It's a, it's a very powerful book for creating the life that you want. And it's out of print and you can find it online for like 120 bucks or, or less. But it's, uh, I'm going to, you know, if, I'll, if you go to my website and get on my newsletter, I'll be getting you a free copy of an audio book and a PDF of that. The Secret of Creating Your Future. 
And like Mark was saying, I sold my house in Hawaii um, using uh, strategic marketing, some direct response marketing. I had a one, it was a, I did really well buying real estate. That's how I got the real estate bug in Hawaii. It was when the Japanese were uh, having their housing bubble. So prices were going crazy. And I bought a, a town home with my VA, no money down. Then we bought a year later, we bought another brand new town home with my wife's VA. And, and they, and then a year later, we sell both of those for double what we paid for them. And I bought this high end luxury home. And then, then I saw the market turn and I wanted to get out of it quickly. And so I created a, a, a strategy to sell it in one open house, having people bid on the price of the house. I had 60 people at my open house, bid it up to a, a level that I could sell it for. And so I wrote a book, how to sell your home in nine days. Um, I decided to move back to the mainland. I, I studied the best places to live, work, retire, and own real estate. And I chose uh, Colorado. In fact, I published a, well, I didn't publish it. I put together a CD uh, on uh, kind of a directory on, based on that title. That was one of my first, another one of my information products. Um, but I started studying real estate, creative real estate, real estate investing. I got the Carlton Sheets course. That was kind of a week. So I, I got in touch with Ronald Lands events and I got his stuff and then I got Lou Brown stuff and Bill Brown check stuff and I just keep buying stuff but I implemented it and within 30 days of learning going to an event I actually did my first deal and and a couple months later because of my marketing and actually just taking action I started doing deals every month and I bought over 500 houses until I retired so to speak in 2015 so I've been during that time, I'd go to events and I would show my marketing tools to the other investors and the speakers and they'd have me get up and teach it. And that's how I became a speaker. And I published over a hundred, you know, home study programs, you know, training programs on teaching investors all aspects on how to be successful, buying uh, real estate, holding real estate, renting real estate, just, you know, but as specifically like a business. And then I also uh, started doing some coaching um, uh, as, as, as far as, as well as publishing and doing events. Then in 2015, I got sued by the state of Colorado and they took my portfolio of $6 million worth of properties. And that's a story I'll say for the end, if we have time, how's that Mark? <laughs> Cause that, it is an interesting story and I do have the notes in here on that. Um, so, uh, I do want to give you guys some free stuff, so some training materials. So because we're short on time, the best way I can really help you is give you several hours of really good stuff. And by the way, I, I am actually doing a giveaway this, this month. I'm giving away a, a million dollars worth of, of my programs. I, when I moved here to uh, Texas, I, have my, I had a racquetball court in my house in Colorado and it was full of my inventory. And now I got a barn full of my inventory. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of it. It's great stuff, but I got to get rid of it. And so I'm going to give it away, uh, as di and digital stuff as well. Um, so if you want to, uh, get $500 at least worth of great training materials, go to richardgroup.com, opt into my newsletter. Um, you'll be able to actually select what programs you want. Uh, by next week, I'll send you out a form. And then before we ship, um, I'll also show you how wa ways by sharing the you know program, sharing the, the giveaway, you can um, earn up to five thousand dollars worth of training materials and support. And then we're going to give away a grand prize on July twenty fifth of uh, a, a, a fifty thousand dollar package of training and support. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I'll I'll, I'll re-mention that at the end. Um, now. Let's talk about five ways to get more seller, buyer, and investor leads, okay? And so seller leads to buy their house, buyer leads to, you know, get your houses occupied or sold, and then investor leads to, you know, um, do deals with, all right? Now, when you talk about leads, most people don't have a good idea of what a, a lead actually is. Okay, so a lead, a prospect is someone who's ideally, like home, if you're going to buy houses, then your prospects are homeowners. They're not the ideal prospect, but that's part of your market, okay? Um, 
you got to get a homeowner through marketing to raise their hand and say, yeah, I'm interested in selling my house. And they give you your con their contact information. Now they're a lead. Okay. So that's the depth lead. They've, they've, they've given you their contact information and they said they're interested in learning more. All right. And then customers you've done business with. So you, you communicate differently to these different audiences. All right, so the one, one way you can get uh, free leads is networking. And some of you are always going to be doing some of these things, but today if you want to, uh, you, I, I like spending money on, on low-cost marketing campaigns, but the, the free stuff I think you should be doing because when I started, when I moved to Colorado, uh, the first thing I did is contacted the newspapers and said, hey, there's a new marketing consultant in town. It was small. And in fact, I bought over 500 houses in this small of about seven to 14,000 people. Um, but they did uh, articles on me because uh, the, the news, they want stories. Uh, oh, no, I'm going to invest in you. It, it has you to invest in me? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I'm back on. Thank you. All right. So get out there and network. I know there's that we're, we're in the lockdown and all of that. So now you can do it virtually. Okay. And that's what I've been doing a lot of networking virtually recently, but when you can get out there, do the business mixers, join community organizations, um, you know, go ahead and attend those, those free seminars, those, those, what, what I call a pitch a thon or a pitch event, just not necessary to buy stuff and get some ideas, but actually to meet people. Okay. Um, I think today it's about relationships and the more re uh, good relationships you have, the more successful you're going to be. It's always been that way, but I think it's really important today when people are trying to just mass market everybody and not, and just hide behind their computer and stuff like that. Uh, it's not the way to do it. Uh, networking on social media is really effective these days. Uh, Facebook and Facebook groups, LinkedIn. I think you should, st if you're not there, you should start, creating yourself a present and presence and actually get to know people and help people and provide, you know, answers and solutions and also ask questions. And that's a great way to network now on social media. And then, like I said, now you can do these virtual events like tonight. Uh, number two would be free publicity. Um, if you have some expertise and if you're in the real estate business, if you have any experience, you do have, you do more, knew more know more about certain aspects of your real estate space and you can get interviewed by others and, and also media publications. And then you can um, repurpose those interviews uh, to give yourself credibility, but it also can, you know, bring you uh, some contacts and some leads. Um, podcasts, uh, that's becoming more and more popular. Um, they're always, uh, the hosts are always looking for people to interview and talk about things, especially the, you know, you'd want to go after podcasts that relate to what you do. Uh, local TV, uh, again, they're looking for stories. Uh, press releases, are you can send those out for free if you have something newsworthy um, related to maybe what's going on locally or in the national news, uh, or just have a, a nice you know, human interest story. Um, charity drives, that's a good way to meet people. And like I said, hero stories. So if you had a great experience with one of your tenants or with one of your buyers or one of your investors, and it's, it, it, it's a good story on how they really got what they needed with your help, share those stories. Uh, you can get those published and there's just so many benefits to that. And these are, type of, these are the type of things I did when I got started and I'm still doing it today. Uh, content marketing, that's what I've done over the years. I've really never spent money on advertising my uh, real estate uh, information business. I do spend money on uh, marketing to, for, to get buyers and sellers, um, but content marketing uh, is a great way to attract the right people. So write articles about the right topics. Like say you wanted, uh, maybe you want uh, buyers for your homes that have less than perfect credit. So then you could buy, you could maybe write an article or have someone else provide you an article uh, around, you know, improving your credit score or getting a loan. Um, so different how to topics that would relate to the people you want to attract. Okay. And then take that same content and put it in videos and put that out on videos on websites and YouTube and all that. Um, and then blogging about 
these uh, type of topics. Um, and then consumer awareness guides. So I have a, like a marketing system with all of the marketing tools created and I've written all the free special reports and all the ads and all the scripts and the free special reports sometimes we call a consumer awareness guide. Okay. So it's good to, it, and it has good information, but it also uh, is telling them why they should do business with you. I think um, every, every business should have this type of uh, content going out uh, to track uh, the people that they want to do business with. Now, the best thing to do is have some type of irresistible free offer, uh, something that you can email um, or they can download or maybe deliver, you know, through a Zoom meeting or on a phone call or in a meeting. So, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to offer, you know, this, this what we call a widget or a lead magnet. So if you don't have, if you're not offering a book or a report or some type of um, interesting content, to drag, drive pe people to you, then you're, if you're doing any type of promotion or advertising, you're, you're working too hard. Because when you're doing promotions, a lot of times you're not trying to, you know, like if you want to buy houses and you want sellers to call you, you're not trying to buy the house, you're just trying to get them to respond. So you can get the information on their house and then make them an offer. Well, what, focus in on getting them to respond and then build the relationship. All right. Co-op advertising. Now, this is really a good opportunity. If you have a good marketing message you want to get out, if you've ever mailed postcards or a message, if you're putting ads out uh, online or offline, if you have a good message, if you want to get that out for free, what you can do is you can get it out for free on postcards, oversized postcards. You can get it out on flyers. Um, you can get it, you know, uh, different ways if you split the cost with other people. So, for example. You can send an oversized postcard. It's actually considered a flat up to 12 inches by 15 inches. Now you could get, you could get 12 different ads on that. Okay. And you could, you could sell those ads and, and get a couple of those spots on there, sell 10 ads, take a couple spots for yourself and have all your 10 advertisers pay for the entire mailing and then have it mailed to everybody in a, a specific neighborhood. If you want to do any type of, type of saturation mailing, or mail it to a specific list if everybody wants to hit that list. Now, of course, you can do less uh, advertisers. You can actually do a small postcard with uh, just three other advertisers. You can have four spaces, and you can take one, and, and you, you charge your other three advertisers one-third of the entire cost of the campaign, and you can mail as many postcards as you want. Probably, um, you'll get so much to the point where you don't, you just, you got so much, you're doing so many, so much business, you, you don't have to do more marketing, you know, as aggressively. Uh, but that's one way to get, uh, stretch your marketing um, budget. So direct mail with postcards and mailers. Flyers, you can do the same thing. Uh, flyers uh, inserted into a publication. I know a lot of these publications are going out of business. So a lot of things are going online. But if you have any community publications or a newspaper that goes out and you can get a flyer in there, uh, you can have your message on one side and someone else on the other side. Now you split it in half, or you can have, again, four panels, front and half of one sheet. You take one and sell the other uh, three spots for one third your cost. So there are different ways you can get flyers out. And of course, you can have a, a larger fold, uh, flyer that folds, folds over. Um, and I, I do actually teach real specifically how to do this. So if you jump on my, my newsletter, I got a free newsletter. Uh, at my website, then I will be happy to teach you some of these strategies uh, more specifically. And then business cards. I can't believe how many people don't have, have something on the back of their business cards. That is free advertising space. You're already paying for the business cards or you can actually get free business cards, but use the back as with a, think of it as a classified ad and have a headline with a few benefits and a call to action. So it's like, you know, grabbing their attention, telling you what, what you do and some of the benefits of it for them and then tell them what to do. Go to my website, you know, I'll give, order this widget, this lead magnet, or give me a call, whatever it is, free consultation. So call to action. And then of course, there's other ways you can do cooperative advertising. You can get other people to donate gifts that you can send out to people to uh, attract them and they can get the benefit of getting a new customer. So, if I had a pizza restaurant 
I would be giving away free pizzas to all new customers. So I would let other businesses give out those coupons to drive them to my restaurant. So that's an example. Free, free, free estimate, free test drive, free, free session, free week, your first week free, those type of things. Businesses will give those away in order to get people in the door if, if they're smart or if they have a plan on how they're going to convert those people into customers. And then now there's a lot of free ad space out there. Now, your business name or you're doing whatever your business name, like a DBA, that is free advertising. So if you're going to create a business, I think a lot of thought should go into the business name. It should tell people what you do. And if you can't do that, at least have a tagline because whenever you put out your business name and tagline, you know, on your stationery or online or in directories, it's going, it's, it's like, again, it's like free advertising. So to take that a step further, um, there are other places to, to uh, expand on that, but it also expand the domain name. So your domain name uh, for your business, you know, your website name, that is free advertising. People look at that before they go to the website. So they have to read it. So if you can have a little message in your domain name or a little message in your business uh, name, that's ideal, okay? Now, what you can do definitely is your social media profiles. I just found out that LinkedIn allows you to now 220 characters for your profile. Now, I had already maxed out Facebook, and I'll show you examples, but this is free advertising. What if, if you're going to connect, if network with people online, they're going to look at your profile. So you should use that space to let people know what you do and why they should follow you, why they should like you, okay, why they should friend you, all right? Another place is uh, email signatures on all your emails that, that you could put some advertising or a little tagline with a call to action. Um, free bus business listings online, you should take advantage of all of those. Uh, you, it doesn't hurt, it's free, okay? Um, and then there are the free classified ads like Craigslist and there's other ones. And then again, back of the business card. So here's an example. Okay, so on Facebook, uh, my profile says marketing, mindstormer, strategist, copywriter, and investor for experts, infopreneurs, and real estate pros. Okay, that, I used up every character I could. That, they wouldn't let me do any more than that. But on LinkedIn, I just changed it. Now it says marketing maven, creative copywriter, revenue rainmaker, solution herder, possibility peddler, thought breeder, game planner, success architect, ad innovator, active investor, and marketing pro since the first Mac ad aired, <laughs> okay? So I used up all the characters possible to let people, give people just a more, you know, more information is better sometimes, I think. I, I, when I send out postcards, I do not put any photos or logos or anything like that. I fill the entire thing up with a very uh, benefit-laden uh, copy, you know, sales message. You know, it's really, I'm just trying to get them to respond. I just want them to go to the website or I want them to call. And that's the entire thing. They don't care about your logo or your name and all that. They want to know what's in it for them. Then they can find out later who you are. Um, all right. How do you turn unconverted leads into cash? All right. Here's some ideas. So Mark already mentioned this earlier uh, when he was talking about a deal example. What you want to do is you want to become a transaction engineer. If you've been trained to go after a certain type of deal, okay, so let's say it's a you know, rehabber. Okay, buy a house, cheap, all cash, fix it up, retail it. That, that's one business model, okay? Uh, go out, get, get properties under contract, and then sell your contract for, you know, for a few bucks. Okay, that's wholesale. So you can do that. But some people, that's all they do. They just do one thing or maybe two things. You want to be able to do five or six things, okay? Because I can go to a wholesaler, someone who's trying to buy houses, you know, get them under contract for 60 cents on the dollar, 65 cents on the dollar. And if they can't do that, then they throw those leads in the trash. Well, there's a lot of money in those leads. I will actually buy those leads. If you're generating leads and, and you can't, and you have unconverted leads, just, I will buy them from, you, okay? So just so you know, um, you want to have multiple exits. You want to have multiple investing models. 
And then also a lot of people, they miss out on just converting their existing leads. You've already paid for them. So if you, you work your existing leads, those are free. And a lot of people don't do that. You really have to do that. That will double your income by just following up on the people already on your list. Okay. And you, and you want to create a system for that, but if you don't have a system, at least do it manually. Okay. So I have a really good system, but, and, and, and strategies, but just do it, just follow up. Okay. Now you can also joint venture with another investor or some, someone within your, your industry uh, to um, have them, you know, get their leads that you can convert or um, to say get their leads that you can convert or you can convert some of their leads. So kind of a, kind of a joint venture. All right. Um, if they, uh, if it, it's, if they're not doing anything with those leads and you can do something with it, then you, you do something with it and you split the money. Okay. So, um, sell. Okay. Like I said, I buy, I'll buy these leads. So if you, if you're interested, get on my newsletter, I'll be a, uh, putting up a, a, a page on my website about it in about a week or so. Uh, maybe, you know, nine days. And then um, I will ex uh, describe exactly what I'm, what I'll buy. So if you have a list of real estate investors, is that, that's your, uh, but you're not working a part of that. I, what I do is I will mail them. I'm not going to call them, text them, email them. I'm not going to spam them. I might contact them in a nice way, but the first thing I prefer to do is mail them a postcard and ask them to call me. That's, that's my preferred method. And then just focus on the people that call me. All right. Uh, but if it depended on the list, you know, how I'd contact them, but I'd always mail them a card. Uh, so you, I, I want mailing addresses. And if you don't have mailing addresses, we can talk about it. All right. Then um, to help you with those, uh, those, those strategies, okay, that I just talked about, let's take a look. Uh, becoming a transaction engineer and converting your leads. So I have a, a training system. It's called the five by five real estate profit system. It has 17 training modules. It's a complete training from A to Z on doing all types of different transactions, actually without buying houses. We talk about buying houses, uh, but this is actually how to, how to do, how to make money, not buying a house, but, but it also teaches you how to buy houses too. But um, that's the purpose is to make you a transaction engineer. So, uh, I want to give you the, there's 17 modules. So I want, I'm going to turn on modules one through four for you. So you can actually go through one through four and you're going to love it. They're on marketing, pre-screening and exit planning. And that's going to give you a lot of, uh, additional help on what I just talked about for free and there's no obligation or whatever. So, and then I have my strategic marketing secrets for real estate entrepreneurs course. I want to give you module number one and two out of 10 for free. These are online. All right. So the first modules on online marketing, the, the kind of the big picture blueprint and the other one is on offline marketing. Okay. And it's, it, it's going to change the way you think about how you do business and make money. All right. And so that entire system is about how to generate leads and convert leads for of uh, buyers, sellers, investors, and private lenders. Okay. So just go to richardroop.com and get on my newsletter. And then uh, how do you protect yourself during this uncertain economy? Um, during the, what's amazing is I told you I lost $6 million worth of properties in a lawsuit with the government of Colorado. Um, I still, nobody can still figure out what happened but I did learn some lessons. I can share them if we have time tonight. Otherwise I am going to put some of this information on my website soon. I did do a video with uh, an interview with uh, Joe McCall and you'll find that video on my website and check that out. I kind of explain it, but the last financial crisis, a lot of people lost are, are worse off than me. Okay. So a lot of people are bouncing back. A lot of people are coming back. Okay. Now with the virus and the lockdown, now people need to bounce back from that, okay? Uh, so a lot of what I do is to solve problems. That's what I do, I pro solve problems. So the more problems there are out there, the more, the more I have to share, okay? So right now, I think prices are gonna be flat to lower. That's my opinion, and who no nobody knows, but you know, kind of plan for that, and if it goes up, then it's just a bonus, okay? Baby boomers drove price appreciation over the decades. They're downsizing, okay? So we're not gonna see the same type of 
uh, push on real estate prices like we're used to, okay? Incomes are, are down, they're gone, and it's gonna stay that way for some time. So incomes are lower, okay, for, for a majority of the people. And we're gonna see waves of defaults, waves of defaults, okay? It's gonna get bad. Uh, so I think w a lot of us are in the business of helping these folks, okay? So you wanna be prepared. Um, and uh, another trend is people are gonna be moving, and they've already been, moving out of the cities and suburbs more into the rural areas. And that's the growth area. So if you wanna buy long-term, you wanna want to buy where people are going, uh, if you're inclined, start going further and further out away from the metro areas, right? And I did a lot of research back before I moved to Colorado on this. And I saw it exactly happen uh, by Dr. Jack Lessinger, um, this thing called Pinterbia. And it was exactly what he uh, talked about. And this next phase is, is already, you know, I just think that's what I think is going to happen. So don't, the way to protect yourself now is don't make promises you can't keep, okay? Now's the time, and this is what that five by five system is about, is um, if you can't buy a property because you can't get the right price or it's too risky, then you buy it on contingency so you eliminate your risk. So, oh, I don't wanna pay this price or I don't wanna pay this monthly payment or I don't wanna pay this down. Well, don't promise to do that because you're uncertain. Just make it contingent. Like for example, if you're buying a house, a free and clear, I teach people how to buy free and clear houses with owner financing, long-term owner financing, low or no interest, okay? And, but you have to give the, usually you gotta give the seller a monthly payment. Well, don't offer them a monthly payment more than what the house can afford. Um, we, the net positive cash flow, that's fine. You can give them all that, but keep, maybe keep some for yourself. But what if, what if um, your rents go down? Well, then that, you know, if you gave them all the cash flow, now you're going to be in a negative uh, condition. So what you can do is do something like, I'm going to pay you this amount, but if this happens or this happens, then this is going to happen. So you got to start using more contingencies just to, protect yourself. And if you do good marketing, you have plenty of people to talk to, you'll find the people that will do whatever you want to protect you in order to do the deal. Okay. Um, so I think you should start buying with owner financing. I actually not really excited about any type of transaction that has a bank involved in the, if I'm relying on a bank to do something for me to get my money, I don't want to do it. I, that's just me. I know a lot of you guys do that. I don't do that. I've never used a bank loan I ne uh, to buy a property. Uh, and I've, I, I, I've never, I, well, in the beginning, I relied on my buyers to cash me out. But later I found out I have no control over that. So all, all the buyers I work with and the tenant buyers and the tenants, I don't rely on them to do anything. So it's win or win. That's how you should set things up, especially today. Now you can also control properties without ownership with options, lease options in different ways. And that's another way to mitigate your, your risk. And that, that, and that's one, just one of the five by five strategies, if that applies. Okay. Um, so how do you create more cash now, cash flow and cash later? So quickly, um, I knew I was going to run out of time. So I did a video, it's called seven ways to raise cash. Um, I walk you through seven ways. It's on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. When you go to my website, just go to the contact page. It has all my social media links, okay? Um, so I, I, I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but a couple things is I think you should get liquid. I think you should sell anything you don't want to own. Uh, anything you don't need, get rid of it. Raise some cash, okay? What, if big stuff, little stuff, all right? Sell products, services, and your unwanted stuff have put some cash reserves. Okay. Um, there's other, that's one way to raise cash is to sell things. Okay. Now I, on that video, and this is an old video. I, I, I told, told people about missingmoney.com. If you haven't heard about that, go to missingmoney.com, put in your name, your spouse's name, your family's name, and, and there's money that the states are trying to give back to the people that it goes to, and, but they don't know how to contact them. When I first did that, my company had $9,500 in that database, which I was able to claim. I had to fill out a form, and within a week, I had $9,500. And then I found money for my sister and my brother and, my, and some more money for myself. And then I started doing this for clients, 
I would, uh, people I know, like I would look them up and if I found something, that's a great way to build a, a little rapport with someone you, you meet new is say, hey, do you know you have some missing money <laughs> and tell them how to get it. So check that out. Uh, uh, as far as cash flow, reduce your, you can reduce your cash flow, um, re, your expenses, and you can actually improve your cash flow. So this is something I've taught for many years. Negotiate, you can negotiate your monthly payment obligations if it's not a bank or some you know, government or some type of thing. If you're dealing with an individual or a business, or maybe a small business, like say self-storage, okay? If you are paying per month, you can go to owner and say, tell you what, I'll give you nine payments now up front and I won't have any payments for 12 months, okay? If you do that, if you put that into a financial calculator, that's a 35% return on your money. Now, today, more and more people are gonna be so desperate. People with free and clear houses are gonna sell their houses because they can't pay the tax, the property tax. I mean, it's, it's gonna be crazy, okay? so. People will negotiate. If you give them some money now, they will discount uh, this products or services or whatever. So just keep that in mind. Look for those opportunities. So today, if I was going to, instead of nine, you know, I'll pay you nine and, you know, I don't have any payments for 12 months, like say on a, owner, a seller carry back note or something, I might say, I'll give you five months now up front and then I don't have any payments for 12 months. And if that's working, I'll, I'll go to four. So, um, now, it, it, and it will help them out if they want the money. Otherwise, they'll just keep getting their monthly payments. All right. Now, you can uh, negotiate terms on any existing obligations you got going out, and you can uh, negotiate the terms on any new obligations. Like I said, if you bought a house, you know, go ahead and get some owner financing, and you can really dictate the terms of the payment. And, and all the other elements that works for you. And if it doesn't work, you, ha you haven't lost any. So any new obligations, car any type of loans, any type of installments, you know, um, try and negotiate uh, a lower monthly payment or end price. All right. All right, and now real quickly, this is one of the formulas that I like to share with my coaching clients and my students is, you know, if you wanna live your preferred lifestyle, if you wanna have anything in your life this is the simple formula, okay? I call it the five-step formula for success. And number one, what you do is you set a goal. And by the way, if you want a copy of these slides, just let me know. I'll probably go ahead and post the replay on this and the slides or whatever. But number one is uh, set a goal. Number two is make a plan. Number three is plan your work. And number four is work your plan. Then you're gonna get feedback and adjust. Okay, so number one, set a goal. I think people don't set high enough goals for a number of reasons, but I think you should, if it's important to you and you're committed to it, if you're committed to it, set big goals. Don't forget about how you're gonna do it. Just what, what would be ideal, the ideal situation? What do you want and when, right? That's a goal. Then the how will come, okay? So now the next step is, okay, I really want that because it's, it's important to me. Now you go ahead and make your plan and figure out how it's going to happen. See, a lot of people do that backwards, all right? Make your plan. Then you got to take those elements of the plan and get it into your schedule or those things that have to happen will get done. So plan your work. Then when you're working your normal uh, business, all you do is work off of your calendar or your schedule, all the important things you put in there. That's all they get done, and then you have you know some fluff time, and then you get interrupted and all that. But all the important things get done because you get them into your schedule. So uh, plan your work, and then work your plan. Just operate off the schedule, and then nothing's going to be perfect. So when you get off off track, you want to you want to keep measuring it along the way. If you get off track, you can adjust and uh, get to your goal. Okay, so that's the that's the formula. All right, and I told you I, I, I published that book, The Secret of Creating Your Future. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, within the next week here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, post that on, on my website. It, it is on my Facebook, well, the audio book is on my Facebook page, but I'm gonna let people download the PDF and, uh, and listen to the audio book online. 
and I will announce that in my newsletter. So that will be shortly. But that's uh, that book changed my life. It was written by my business partner, uh, Dr. Tad James. Um, I was his marketing director. I told him to write the book. We needed a marketing tool. And there's a good story behind this book, but it's it really changed my life. All right. And so, and then finally, I know we're out of time here. Um, so if you want to participate in this million dollar giveaway, just get on my newsletter, okay? And I will walk you through, uh, you know, I'll just tell you, you know, how to get your stuff, all right? All right, and then uh, that's it. Okay, and then I do have some information on my lawsuit. So Mark, Charles, uh, do, we want, do we have some questions? Do we have time for Guys, we definitely have time for questions, and Richard will stay all night. As, as long as you're willing to, we're glad to stay on with you. Uh, guys, what we'll do is we'll open it up for questions. If anybody has a question, feel free to either unmute yourself or type it in the chat box, and we will answer it. We'll have Richard address it for you. If anybody has questions, please feel free to ask. I'm sure that there's many on here who probably do have questions. I think this is probably an area that most of us use additional expertise in. So pick Richard's brain, what will happen? Richard, so it looks like you may be on mute. Uh, do you want to unmute yourself? Somehow you got muted. And we have a question here in the chat box from owner that says, what is your take on PropStream? Okay, what, what was the question? Yes, the question here is, what is your take on PropStream for lead generation? P-R-O-P-S-T-R-E-A-M. Is that like a website, PropStream? Uh, I am, I've actually been out of the real estate business, you know, for five years, and I just, I'm just getting back. Uh, I think I've heard people talk about it okay. Um, I'm actually in the process of lining up the best experts to collaborate with uh, because I want to teach everything I, uh, in a different way, but I also want to send people to the best people I know that can take it to the next level. So I am looking at the best uh, lead generation, done for you mailing, done for you, lead, you know, all these systems and software and services. I'm checking them all out. I haven't checked that out that one out yet, prop stream, but I, I haven't heard anything bad about it. So I'll check it out. Any other questions? Guys, do we have any other questions? We got 35 people, man. That's great. Okay, hey, we, have, we have another one, Richard, uh, from the same person owner says, what are your goals? My goals is to help uh, people live their preferred lifestyle by being in their own business, whether it's uh, real estate investing business or information marketing business or any type of what I would call a marketing entrepreneur. Those are the areas that I've made millions of dollars in uh, as an information marketer, a real estate investor, and as a marketing entrepreneur. So I can, I, and I love teaching. I love sharing. And so I am putting together some phenomenal programs that are launching on July 25th and then some more stuff in you know, August and September. So I'm, uh, I'm just looking to contribute, share, collaborate, and bring together the best minds that are people that are smarter than me and just have a phenomenal time. See, I, w I don't think people should rely on things that there are outside of their control. So when people lost their jobs or they lost their businesses, I have a family business in Laguna Beach, California, foot jewelry business. It's still shut down. It will never open up again. It's been there for over 30 years. Okay. The, the entire business relied on the summer business. I mean, they, the three, four months of the year that they rely the entire year on and they make handcrafted jewelry all year long to really sell it during the period of time, you know, they lost it. So they'll never, they'll never be open again. Uh, so I want, I want to get people, put people in control of their lives by having them uh, work for themselves and teach them how to 
serve other people, how to provide value, how to improve other people's lives and, and do it in a way that is uh, as alignment with what other things are important to you. So that's, that's what I want. That, those are my goals. Richard, we have two other, uh, three questions actually that came in. Now we're getting a few. So we have one from Sharon. And I think uh, this one here will probably interest all of us. She says, well, I'm curious to hear about your lawsuit with the state of Colorado. And what did they do with your $6 million of real estate assets? <laughs> I will be happy to share that. <laughs> all right. Let me give you the, uh, this might spark a lot more questions. <laughs> all right. I'll give you the, a, a quick answer. And then I, I can go to my website and watch that interview I did with um, Joe, uh, Joe McCall. Uh, because that was, it, that was in May, and that was the first time I ever talked about it because I've been under a gag order. I'm still under a gag order. I cannot defend myself in public, okay? So, but there are facts that I can say. I just can't say anything that would imply that their lawsuit had no merit. So I got, I got sued with three allegations. Dealing securities without a license, selling unregistered securities, and fraud and they said that was related to my private lender program my private lending my private lenders okay all of my lenders were secured by real estate okay so in colorado any loan note secured by real estate is exempt from registration and licensing well i actually was licensed just because i wanted to do good business but i never registered them because i thought they were exempt and um and then the fraud, they said, well, you didn't give uh, the lenders all the information they should have had. Well, there's no list of all that they have, you have to do. So it's, it's a subjective thing. So they, they said my entire house buying business of 20 years, 15 years was a Ponzi scheme. Okay. But however, I have an estate with equity. So how does that make sense? Maybe they didn't know that at the time, but they prop they couldn't they didn't know what I was doing, but then they found out they're, they're, they couldn't find anything wrong. So, uh, so let me tell you, I'll, I'll walk walk you through the steps. So in 2012, they just showed up unannounced. I was licensed at the time as a uh, you know as a securities dealer because I was actually my excess private money. I did loan that out, so I did have to be licensed for that. I didn't, I didn't have any complaints from any of my investors. Nobody ever lost money. I had one investor where I was late paying them off, so I paid them the, the late fee and the default interest. I mean, uh, it just kept my agreements, but on that particular house, I didn't have it sold, and I didn't have, a, you know, he didn't want to extend it, and I didn't have another investor, so it was a few months late. Uh, I had one lawsuit from a seller out of 500 properties where I was, I was late on his mortgage when I took it over subject to. I didn't hear about the hearing. They got a default judgment. The securities uh, division of securities in Colorado said, I should have told everybody about that default judgment, even though it was in a trust on one house and it didn't affect any of my own property. So that, that was their allegations. Okay. What happened was they got a default judgment before we went to trial uh, on the licensing and the registration. The judge ruled against me. I thought though that was the easiest thing to win. And I thought the fraud would be subjective because there, there's no defined rules. It's easy to, you know, it's easy to accuse anybody of fraud, I think, because it's so subjective. So I thought that the other ones were in the bag and we lost those. And now we're going to trial next week and uh, just on the fraud charge. Okay. Uh, and so I, 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 I didn't know what to do. They, they, they wanted me to pay them $1.9 million. Well, <laughs> okay, no. Um, so what they did is they said, we'll, we'll put the, all, we'll, we'll just, the, we negotiated, I had 56 properties, 38 of them, they took into receivership. They let me keep 17. And then, so the 38 had some private notes on them. The other ones didn't. And so they took those in the receivership. I thought they were going to, you know, sell the properties. You know, um, I had, most of them had, were under contract with my tenant buyers. Um, some were sold on a wraparound mortgage, land contract, that type of thing. So I figured that they would just dispose of the properties and pay everybody off. And I actually negotiated with them to get that extra money, okay, uh, the extra equity. Well, what they did is they took over the 38 properties, the receiver, for 12 months, they did not pay anybody. 
They collected all the rents, collected all the mortgages and notes, and they didn't pay anybody except the insurance and the taxes. That's it. Uh, even the loans I took subject to, they defaulted on that. They defaulted on every agreement I had with buyers and sellers and lenders, everything. I didn't have a problem. They created this, this mess, okay? And uh, I, I think it's just what they do is they just drain an estate. That's what it appears people, you know, that's what appears that they did because they didn't do anything for a year except collect the money. Then at the end of the year, they said, well, we're going to take, uh, we're going to go ahead and just put your company in bankruptcy now and let the bankrupt take care of it and let them sell it. Okay. And they admitted during the hearings that I had a million dollars in equity later, it would have been 2 million because this was when the properties were just kind of, they were down and they, and then they took off. I lost $2 million in equity. They admitted there's a million dollars in equity, but they took it all. Um, they turned it over to the bankruptcy trustee and then they started doing something, but I can, I can give you stories about that. So what, what they did is when they put it in the bankruptcy, the other ones were, were in my company name. So they took the rest of my properties. So uh, that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> and, and, and every time they did something, they put out a press release and I wasn't allowed to do any de uh, defend myself. And then they actually put me in jail for contempt of court for signing a corrective deed or something uh, on a, a property that was not in the estate. It was a seller care back note or a property. It had nothing to do with it. And it was just a corrective deed. And they said, you're still doing business violating the judge's orders, contempt of court, they put me in jail for, you know, 30 days until I, you know, they said 60, but they, they weren't allowed to put me in there and it took 30 days to get back in front of the other judge and get out. So it, but of course they send their press release that I went to jail. So now when you look up my name on this, you always see, you only see their side of the story. And um, uh, so th there you have it. All right. And then let's Richard, that was quite, quite, quite a story, boy. Uh, we do have a few more questions that have come in. We have one from Jim Davis. He says, using your message with 1,000 posts mailed to a list, what kind of response would you expect? Okay, 1,000 what? 1,000 posts mailed to a list, what kind of response would you expect using your message? Okay, there's three elements of the marketing campaign. The message, the market, and the media, okay? So I probably have the best postcard, small postcard, so that it's got a great message. Um, a postcard is the media. So it's, it's a postcard or a letter or it's an ad or a billboard or a video. The, post, the media is a postcard, direct mail postcard, okay? And then, um, and I like it because it's cheap. It's naked mail. They don't have to open it. It doesn't have to look personal, but mine does. Mine looks personal. It's personalized and it has a great copy. And then the, the next element is who do you send it to? Now I've come back here and I see, uh, apparently everybody's been being taught to sell mail postcards to all these like out of the area owners or something, which is usually a good list. Um, but now I, I'm learning that people are saying it's deluge. Well, I know how to fix that. If, if people are mailing postcards and, and sellers are getting a bunch of postcards, I know how to stand out in the crowd, but I haven't fixed that yet because I, I'm just finding out that that might be an issue. So when I mailed my postcard, uh, we actually had a postcard mailing service, which I'm going to restart in September, uh, uh, mailfreepostcards.com. And uh, so in se the, we would mail 1,000 postcards, so that's 500 bucks, okay? Um, we would get, we would normally get about, I think 30, 30 calls, 10, 10 leads and do a deal. So for every $500, another way to measure it is for every $500 you spend, you should be making 20 grand on your marketing. That's how it should be. And everybody I talked to is not doing that. So that's why I'm back. I'm, I'm going to help everybody fix that. Um, if you spend, you can spend a thousand to two thousand dollars to make twenty, and that's a home run. Um, so, but I would say, uh, out of the thousand postcards, you should be getting 30, 30 calls. It depends, but that's that's been my experience with a good campaign. 
Richard, that's great information. We have another question here from Ryan. He wants to know, as a mentor, what do you look for? As a mentor, what do I look for? Yes. Uh, as a mentor, um, why, I'm not looking for. <laughs> Wait, is it, you're going to clarify that for me? Um, what, what do I look for? I, I, I don't understand the question. I look Ryan, do you, want, do you want to unmute yourself and speak to Richard so you can just clarify? Are you referring if Richard was mentoring somebody, what would they be looking for? Yeah, if, uh, if uh, what I'd be looking for in, in a in a student, I'm looking for someone who who who's ex, uh, has some goals or or is you know someone who is you know wants to change their life or improve their their, their business or their life. And Charles Ryan said he couldn't unmute himself. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I look for people that 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 want to make a difference in their life because that's what I can do. I mean, obviously, because I do consulting, I do coaching, I do training. My, I, when I'm consulting with people, I don't go out and tell people how to improve their business if they're not interested in improving their business. And, I've, and I, <laughs> I, I talk to those people all the time. They're, they're satisfied. They're content. Well, th there's no reason why I should improve their business if they're not interested in doing it. We had another question, Richard, uh, earlier from someone asking what do you charge, and if somebody wanted to hire you, how would they go about finding out more um everything i do is guaranteed to be free okay i might charge you something but i might guarantee somehow to that it's going to be free because you'll make more than it. um i'm actually not selling anything right now mark <laughs> as you probably know oh well actually i do i have taken on okay i took on i'm setting up my my million dollar coaching uh team i'm bringing the band back together and I'm, I'm launching that in September. And um, I took on some, some, uh, some coaching clients. I took on four in early June, just so I can kind of get it my, uh, my thumb on, the, well, on what people are struggling with. And it's been great. And, then, and I did that through an auction on Facebook. So I actually just let the market determine what they're gonna pay me, right? And, I had, and this is just coming back and it's a small audience or whatever. So they got a really good deal, but it was it helped me, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. So we did it again, and I got four more uh, clients. So right now I have eight clients, but I'm doing all the work. I'm meeting with them every week, and I let I did it by auction, and so I don't have a price for that because I'm not going to offer that again. But what I'm going to do is I'm uh, I have a great uh, probably one of the best coaching programs on the planet. I'm putting that back together where I, I help everybody if they don't get the support. I give them unlimited support if my other support staff doesn't take care of them. So our coaching program is unlimited support. So no matter what problem you have, we will help you uh, solve it. We'll figure it out, okay? Because we got the experience and we, we're pretty creative if it's something new. Um, what In the past, what we would charge is like, you know, okay, the last one I did, I think it was $2,000 a month. But they were also my joint venture partners, so I was getting money out of the deal. Um, prior to that, it was like twelve hundred dollars a month. But that's that program. Um, as a, as a, uh, what I have been offering is uh, three hundred and eighty-five dollars to spend a day, basically a couple hours on on a Zoom. You know, one hour. So I'll do some. If you want me to work with you for a day, for example, I'll spend a, an hour or two looking at your business. Uh, and then spend an hour with you on the phone consulting and finding out what you, what your goals are and then go ahead and uh, spend another hour doing something and then meet with you another hour the next day or a couple of days and then um, finalize everything and then spend another hour. So it's like a day. It's like seven or eight hours, but it's spread out. And as I charge three hundred and eighty five dollars. Can I can I jump jump in here, Richard, and give you a plug? Yeah. OK, so in case anybody doesn't know. This is one of the comments uh, a week or two ago. This is Mark Pantech. I'm one of the co-organizers of all these groups and I'm an experienced investor having done over 300 deals. And so I've gone ahead and hired Richard to be my coach because he not only has the experience as an investor, he also ex has experience 
with copywriting, with marketing, with creativity, the, the number one issue that most people have as a real estate investor is the marketing piece. And that marketing piece includes everything from getting the deals, getting the buyers, getting the capital. And so Richard has the experience and expertise. That's one of the reasons I recommend him. So that's why at the very least, Richard's offering tonight for free, if you'll sign up, and you can correct me here, Richard, if you'll sign up for his newsletter at richardroop.com, then you'll qualify for he, I've been there out of his place, this whole barn full of all these materials he's got. So he <laughs> is wanting to move some of this inventory. It's still valid, good stuff, but basically he's giving $500 worth of training. I mean, things that he got paid, 500 or more. Typically yeah. he's very smart. So he'd sell like, you know, these materials for 500 plus additional consulting with it and, and uh, sort of upsell package. But for being here tonight, if you'll reach out to Richard, you'll qualify for $500 worth of his materials plus his newsletter. So I'm, that's why I'm recommending Richard and all his stuff. And I'm a client of Richard's myself. That, and, is that and, fairly and good, Richard? You, and thank you, Mark. Yeah, no, actually, I give a lot of free stuff. Um, uh, like I told you that I'm I want to give you, I think the marketing and being a, a flexible transaction engineer are one of the two things that people don't do what they need to be doing if they really want to 10 times their business. Okay, just those two things. So I gave you the first part of that so you can get all that information. That is not even part of the, the million dollar giveaway. The million dollar giveaway is on top of that. So my newsletter subscribers always, I've been guilty of giving away too much stuff, but you know, I'll make it in volume, right? <laughs> so whatever. So um, yeah, it, you get, you're gonna, you actually get to get physical stuff for the $500 worth of that. Plus I just gave you, you're going to get at least another $500 of stuff within the next month, uh, just being a newsletter subscriber. And I continue to do that every month. Um, because I do know sometimes it does lead to a high end coaching, you know, client or, you know, a, I used to do live boot camps. I, I charge $4,000 for a three day boot camp, and I have 300 people there, you know, and then a lot of those people would join coaching. So that was a very good model. Um, I'm not interested in doing that anymore. I'm going to be doing everything virtually and I do want to do live events, but I'm not my business. And this is what I'm teaching entrepreneurs is create a virtual component of their business. Okay. Real estate investors, everybody, brick and mortar, bit people that usually meet face to face, all, all of my buddies over the years, because I'm kind of an expert to experts. So all these expert speakers out there that built their businesses, uh, do I do in live in-person events? I was telling them in February, you got to switch to virtual. And then I helped some of them do that. And some of, our, some of them are kicking it and some of them are drag, being dragged. And a lot of them are going, oh, it's going to open up. It's going to be different. It's not going to be the same. We live in a new world. I created a new website. It's uh, virtualpreneurship.com. We live in this new world of, of virtualpreneurship. And, of course, right now it's not ready yet. It just goes to richardroop.com. And uh, But that's I want to help people because if you – if, they, if I can help them understand that and then get them set up because I'm becoming an expert on that, then they'll have more control of what happens in their business regardless of what's going on outside of their business if they're in the right. So let me ask you a question about that, Richard, because this is a question that's come up you know, several times in the last couple of months. Um, are you experienced or familiar or know anybody who is with doing your business virtually? In other words, somebody lives in New York, San Francisco, a more expensive market, and being able to do business in other markets or to do business anywhere. What do, you, what do you think about the doing real estate investing business virtually model? Yeah, no, I think it's unnecessary. I think there are more deals right where you live, depending on where you live, right? I, I, I did all, I lived in a county of 14,000 people. The town was 8,500. The entire county up in the mountains from Colorado Springs, 30 minutes up in the mountains, 14,000, 18,000 people, right? I did like 400 deals right in my own county. Okay, I think you should be a big fish in a small pond. Now, you might live somewhere where you really need to go somewhere else and do deals, but don't go any further than you have to. Sometimes, some of you live in a state where you should actually move out of state and go, you know, go do business somewhere else. If you want to stay in that state and you can't do business in that state for some reason, then yeah, go ahead and do it virtually. Yes, it can be set up and 
mark, now is the time where you can really take advantage of it. So I see a lot of people saying virtual investing, virtual wholesaling. They're just, a lot of them are just using it as a tagline. It, but, uh, but, and then they're, and then they're actually figuring it out. Um, so I'm actually figuring it out as well, but I've been, my first virtual boot camp was in 2000. Uh, well, the five by five is a virtual boot camp I did in 2010, which I'm going to redo now and update it. But I went through it and it, it doesn't need updated. Okay. This, the, the strategic marketing secrets, that was a virtual boot camp I did in 2013. And I have cash now, cash now seek, which was, was a virtual boot camp I did in like 2009. So I started doing virtual boot camps then just because after the financial crisis, it was hard to get people to live events. So, um, so I have experience and I know all the experts out there that are really smart on, on my idea is how do you make a virtual event better than a live event? That's what I told Ron Legrand to do. Keep his convent, you know, he had to cancel his convention. I was supposed to meet with him. On, he wanted me to work on a project and I was supposed to meet with him. And I said, okay, if you, I, he wasn't canceling. I knew he was going to cancel it. I said, make your virtual, make it virtual and make, and, and think about how you can make the virtual better than the live event. That's not easy, but it's possible. Okay. And, and then my friend, Gerald, who had a four day event in April that got canceled, he turned it into a 21 day virtual event and it was better than the four day. So it's possible. So yes. And in investing, I, we have so many opportunities now because of the fact that people are willing to do business virtually. They're willing to do Zoom calls, okay? Um, and how, how showings, how showings are being done virtually instead of- I know, I, so yeah. Everything's so changed. There, there, this, we have a whole new world of opportunity. So yes, absolutely. But, and I, but if, you picture, if you live in an area where people you know, you have decent houses. I like the bread and butter houses, the medium price range, stuff like that. If you got a nice area um, that you don't think the riots are going to come to or something, you know, or I don't know. Uh, I would just buy where you live. Okay. But I think people are going to want to further and further out. So I, if I'm going to target, I'm going to actually live in a rural area right now. I'm going to target the rural areas um, to buy because that's where people are going to want to buy. Okay, um, it, it's called call it, call it the sprawl, but you're still going to have activity everywhere, everywhere. So you can buy and sell anywhere. Do it whatever's convenient for you. You shouldn't be going uh, out of state because you don't have enough deals in your state when when it's typically because you you're you're too tied into one or two business models. You don't have the flexibility to make those deals or figure out how to do those deals. And, and you, have, you don't have a really good uh, marketing method to not only attract the leads and the right people, but then to, to convert them into deals. That's a marketing process in itself. So that's what I do. That's what my marketing system is about. It's, it's not about buying houses. It's about generating leads and converting them. But it's not about all the other stuff. Well, there's marketing to sell it, and there's marketing to fund it. So it's the marketing component of this business. Buying, selling, funding, and uh, whatever. <laughs> so two other, two other quick questions, uh, Richard. One yeah. is the first one. Uh, uh, Janice from California says, Richard, what would you like from us for all of this? That's the question from Janice. And the other question is, as somebody getting started and finding that there's still a lot of competition, how does somebody without a lot of experience compete with these people who have deeper pockets, bigger budgets, and, and just it seems like, a lot of people competing for the same lead. Yeah, uh, better strategy, uh, uh, probably maybe probably better marketing. Uh, you can always target. You can always okay. You can collaborate. That's what. I, that's kind of you know. You, that is an opportunity that people don't like. That. That's what I do in the information marketing world. Right? Is I I'm looking to collaborate. I don't see anybody as competition when I'm buying and selling houses. You know, my competition was either they're going to sell it themselves or they're going to list it with an agent. And so my marketing talks them out of that unless it doesn't. So um, uh, other, I, there were other investors, but there's, there, there's more deals. There should be, there, there are more deals out there. 
I guess I, here's the thing. You know, the biggest problem right now is there's a lot of stupid investors. So there's a lot of idiot, you know, idiots, you know, mistrained. Um, Inexperienced it, people don't know what they're doing. You don't really, they're not proper. Yeah, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're investors that are paying more than they should. And so how can you compete with that, right? You really can't, right? Um, if there's people that are, now you, some people will pay more than you because they have a different exit. So what you got to do is you got to get trained on the different ways, become a transaction engineer, and the five by five is the best place to get that. But I always teach that in all of my courses and trainings. Uh, but that was designed to do that, okay? So you want multiple ways to get into a property, and then you want multiple ways to get out, and then you can actually do some more mass marketing to, to people that other people are not going after because everybody's kind of doing the same um, so no, there's, there's, it, it, when I was uh, doing coaching and people were in a hot, hot market, like I had clients in uh, California and the houses were selling for more than they were listed for, or they were asking super hot market. Well, it's hard to buy houses in that because you only get paid for solving problems. And that's how you get the big money is solve problems, so, solve big problems. So um, if other people are get paying more than you can pay, then that doesn't mean you should pay, you know, should try and compete that with that. You should, you should go ahead and uh, uh, just be better at the uh, follow-up, be better at, you know, maybe finding a different list. So right now I talked to Listability uh, the other day, they're still sending me checks from all my clients that still use them. And, um, but I haven't talked to him in five years. So now I, I talk to her and she can tell me what list, because I always had the best, you know, I told people we had lists that work. We didn't have to screw with it. Right. So they would order it. Now she's telling me, okay, what we're doing is we're stacking this list with this list and this list, which gives us a much smaller list, but a better list. That's what you got to do is to fit is. So I'm, I'm putting that together. Uh, one of the concepts you want to keep in mind is you, it's better to target the smallest viable market not do mass media, but hit, but, but narrow it down so you can actually give more attention to the prospects. So if they're very qualified by sifting and sorting, and you can do that through lists, through your marketing, there's different ways to do that. If they're very qualified, now you can spend more time and money building that relationship. Most people are told, well, s s someone out there tells people, if you don't get them to agree to do owner financing or lease option on the phone, you don't go see them. I think that is totally insane. So you're the one, that's how you outcompete is you, you, you have a better strategy. You, you realize that there's, there's there, out of a hundred deals, there's another 200 on the, on the ones that nobody's going out and meeting with the seller or, you know, and, and yeah, maybe you don't do it today, but you're going to do it in six months or a year. So have a long game versus a short game. That would be my best. Uh, have a long game and 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 build your build your list, build your in-house list, and have effective effectively follow up on it on a regular basis. And that's my 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 uh, strategic marketing secrets course. I give you all the tools and the campaigns, everything to to do that to build a list and then nurture that list and just pull all this money out of this damn list. So two, two last things here, Richard, before we wrap up. One, we wanna make sure everybody's crystal clear exactly what they need to do as their action step to develop a relationship with you. And could you give us a brief case study of one of your clients and how you help them just as an example? Well, I, when I was reviewing the five by five system, um, to make see if I had to update it, I came across a student success panel, okay? And I go, I don't think, because we used to publish those. We'd do a live boot camp, and we would have a student success panel, and I would, I would, they would say, oh, I did this great deal. And so in front of everybody, I would, I would say, okay, well, how did you find it? You know, how did you, uh, how did you negotiate it? How did you get your deal accepted? How did you get it occupied? I walk them through the whole thing. Very, very instructive. And it's evidence that it's, and they're just doing what they were told, okay? So like, so what I did 
is there's three case studies and some Q&A. I broke it into four videos and I just put that on YouTube like yesterday or the day before. Okay. So go so to you're saying this is available for free. Yes. Yes. I don't think, I don't think people are getting that part. No. Yeah. Th that was great content. So I said, man, I got to get that out. So I, I, I actually had to spend some time and I don't really have the time, but see, I need to build my team is, is to cut that up and, 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 and tell people what was in each one. And I'll, it should have been one, you know, two hour or one and a half hour piece, but I, I don't think people would go through it if they knew what was in there, but I broke it up into three pieces so they could listen to the first one and go, oh, wow, this is great. I'll go to part two, part, part three, part four. So there's a four part uh, student success panel from the five by five system that's on my YouTube channel and I just put it up there. And I'm gonna give you, if you go, um, get on my newsletter within a week, I'm going to turn on access on my online program platform, which I've been taking my courses and digitizing them. Some of them were already digitized, but I'm getting them on this platform so I can share them and sell them. Well, in the meantime, while I'm put, putting that together, I'm giving away uh, the, the first part of it as a sample. So you can decide, well, maybe you want to, you know, follow me or, you know, go to my event or order, you know, order the rest of the program. You know, if I, the best way for me to help people is uh, put some money in their pocket before they ever give me any money. That's the best thing. Uh, that's, and that's why I give away the first two modules of a 10 module training that sells for $1,500 um, on, on strategic marketing se secrets. You're going to get that as a newsletter subscriber. All you have to do is get on my newsletter and you're going to start getting these goodies. Uh, and you're going to and you're going to get that $500 worth of hard copy products that I got. And I got like, I got like a hundred titles or, you know, maybe 60, I don't know, 60 different programs. Great. Yeah. That was one of the main things I want to convey to people is that all they got to do is go to your website, richardroop.com and sign up for your newsletter there. And they're going to qualify not only for your newsletter, but for future announcements and go ahead. You're going to make a comment, Richard. Yeah. I was watching. Yeah get on the newsletter because you're going to get information that the public doesn't get. The public is really my YouTube channel and my Facebook and my LinkedIn. So at, get on my newsletter, but then go to Facebook and see, I got lots of great stuff posted there. Go to uh, LinkedIn and I don't do as much over there. Most of my stuff I'm putting on Facebook. So uh, follow me on Facebook. I'm giving out good stuff all the time. In fact, I put out, when I told you I put those four on YouTube, I only put one of them on um, Facebook in order to let people know the rest of them are on YouTube. Uh, but the people on my newsletter uh, would know because now I just restarted my newsletter. I've been doing my newsletter for 20 years. I took a five year break and I sent my first issue, my first relaunched issue just last week. So my second issue is going to be within the next week. And that's where, uh, and oh, and go and download. Oh, Download the 5x5 five five quick start guide off my website. It's right there at the top. It says free guide, five, free 5x5 five five guide. There is 40 pages of killer content. <laughs> now, there's also 40 pages of promotional material, which is all expired. Don't call any phone numbers. Don't follow any of the links. All that stuff is, is you know, old. But the 40 pages of uh, content for the 5x5 five five quick start guide, you, everybody should download that. It's a PDF. You'll love it. Well, we'll be wrapping up here in a moment in case anybody has any last questions here. So uh, the question I'm getting here from Janice, we've got a couple popping up here. One is, is it your name only on Facebook? So they just go, they look at Richard Roop on Facebook or is it a business page or how do they find you on Facebook? Uh, it's my name. Uh, and if you go to my website and click on, uh, I think maybe at the bottom. Yeah. At the bottom of the home page, and then on the contact page, there's only a couple pages right now. I'm I'm building the site. Uh, it has all my links, social media. Yeah, just click on Facebook and it'll take you right there. And it's under my name, Richard Roop. Okay, great. And so in, in wrapping up here, I just want to give you a final plug from the standpoint of one of the things I saw that you did that I thought very brilliant, very successful, is everybody had these standard, everybody the same size postcards. So also you believe that somebody who's a real qualified prospect they're going to read the content because there's value to them because it speaks to them. And what I saw you did brilliantly 
was these oversight. You want to talk briefly about the oversized postcards that you did that were like a half of an eight and a half by 11, but it would stand out in the mail so people would see it. And then it was covered all over front to back with all this content. You want to talk just real briefly about that and how successful that was? Well, that's called million. Yeah, mil that was my first postcard mailing service, million dollar postcards with the oversized postcard that we would saturate to a neighborhood using bulk ray. Uh, then uh, we, we, we started going first class with the small magic bullet postcard uh, because it's a different, because we'd mail it to a specific list. Okay. Which was better. Right. But the saturation uh, cost wise, the saturation still worked, but we got, this was easier and it worked better, you know? So there's so many things. That's why a lot of people have bad marketing because in this business, you can have bad marketing and still make a lot of money. Imagine if you have good marketing, right? All right. Exactly. So, <laughs> so what I want to say on that, Mark, is I'm, I'm going to go ahead and create the world's largest postcard. It's 12 inches by 15 inches. I haven't designed it yet, but I know the size because I can't get it any bigger than that. And then I'm going to go ahead and mail that either. Uh, I'm going to have it saturate neighborhoods like I did with the oversized postcards before. I'm, it's going to be a, a incredible design and copy, right? And it's, it's all going to be copy, but it's going to have a really some interactive components to it. Um, and maybe you have the option of having it sent for free by getting some mailing partners, right? Like I told you about. Um, so I'm going to design that just if you're going to send it on your own, not with any mailing partners, not, you know, not cooperative. And I'll have that template. All my other templates are in the street strategic marketing secret. Um, and I'm going to put that together and I'm also going to mail that d directly to certain lists. So better lists is, instead of saturating because saturation today is called every door direct mail. So we'll do that. But then we want to get some other lists where we'll mail it to them. We'll probably have three or four different versions depending on the list. But like that, as you know, Mark, that magic bullet postcard worked on any list that you mailed to. You didn't have right. to have, yeah, you didn't have to have different uh, tools. Right. Well, can you believe we've gone an hour and a half here? And so we do have people starting to fall off. But I want to say thank you so much for your time and wisdom and expertise. And uh, those people who are on here, most of you did come from Meetup. So if you'd be so kind, one thing you could do for us, since we're not charging you anything, is please post a positive comment on the Meetup page, because that's one of the things that Meetup asks for. And we have other members that are curious, is this just a sales pitch? Are we twisting your arm? What's going on with this? They're hesitating even to get on because so many people all they're doing is selling instead of serving. That's one of the reasons why I had Richard on. Most people are like, what's the catch? Well, the, the key is the relationship. And the key is you want to start as a first step building relationship. And that's what we're doing by having these meetup groups and having this free training and education, information, networking, and so on. We're going to have excellent speakers coming up. And the plan is here, as we open up, we're going to be having uh, where Charles is going to go back to having his meeting yeah, we had the last few more people saying thank you very much. We got a lot of people here saying thank you, Richard. Great information. Thank you very much. Very valuable. So that those are most of the comments I'm seeing now in the chat. Good info. Thank you, Richard, uh, and so on. So with with that, go ahead, Charles. Guys, there's one quick thing I want to touch on in in terms of the live events for anybody in the Charlotte or Raleigh area who are hoping to do live events this month, but. I, I think based on the social distancing requirements and where things are right now, we're going to cancel the ones we had scheduled this month. So we will we'll continue virtual at least for another month and then we'll reassess where things are in August. Okay, great. All right. Well, once again, uh, if you would be so kind also, my name is Mark Pantech. I put my contact information on these meetup groups. What I'm here doing is networking. I have people come to me with deals. They don't know what to do. I know what to do. They need money. They don't know where to get the money. I'm a cash buyer. They sometimes are looking for someone with experience. I do joint ventures. So I'm here networking, helping people. I've been sticking over here in the Birmingham area. So if anybody's Birmingham, Atlanta, Charlotte, Raleigh, any in this corridor, I'm looking for people. I'm going to be making some special offers myself, very affordably working with me to implement. Implementation is the key. 
So with that, I'll leave my number last time. I suggest you do the same, Charles. Charles is focusing on apartments. I'm doing houses, notes, and apartments. <clears throat> my number is 832-766-6997. 732-766-6997. You can text me or call me. Go ahead, uh, Charles. You want to leave your number? Yes, my number is three. Yep, three four seven three zero six three two seven eight. And you've got some people that your work that are working with you and apprenticing with you on apartments to learn the apartment business. And so we ought to probably have you talk about that sometime. But it is getting light here. I know on the East Coast it's after ten. So thank you everybody so much, and we'll have a next one. Next Wednesday, good night. All right. Thanks for coming. Good night, guys. Uh, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, Richard. Good night. Good night. Good night, Richard. Thank you.